welcome to the next class in our 8th standard physics um what have we learned so far let us do a quick recap this class has been this chapter is about force we started talking about what is force there are many words in the english language which suggest force for example push or pull or throw or kick or cut or or uh, stop or uh, move uh, all of these indicate that there is a force being applied a force may be applied on any object um you know we, we when you open the door you are applying a force when you open a window you are applying a force when you pick up a book you are applying a force so there are many examples of forces then we spoke about the effects of a force when a force is applied to an object what can happen what are the effects of a force now a force may cause a stationary object to move for example this chair is is stationary i may cause it to move by applying a force so one of the effects of of a force is uh to cause a stationary object to move another example is a ball has been thrown to you and it is coming to you uh, at a very high speed and you catch it so the the ball which is coming to you at a high speed you stop it by applying a force with your hands so you can apply a force and stop a moving object that is the second effect of a force the first effect was if an object is standing still you can make it move second effect is if an object is moving you can make it stop you can increase or decrease the speed of a moving object if an object is moving at a certain speed by applying a force you can make it move faster or slower if a body is moving in a straight line by applying a force you can change its direction so all of these examples are ways in which a force can change the state of motion so these are the different ways in which a force can change the state of motion of a body which is cause a stationary body to move change the speed of a of a moving body either increase or decrease the speed change the speed or change the direction of a moving body so these are the various effects of a force all of these are possible and these are all described as changes to the state of motion it was not moving now you make it move it was moving in a certain direction you change the direction it was moving with a certain speed you change the speed all of these are possible when you apply a force so these are called the effect of a force it can also change the shape of a body force can change the shape of a body so these are the effects of a force what happens to a body when a force is applied we spoke about this secondly we spoke about different kinds of forces contact forces and non contact forces whenever a force is applied two things or two objects are involved so when i apply a force on the chair two objects are involved my hand and the chair two objects when i lift a pen in my hand two objects are involved 
my hand and the pen. If I have a school bag on my shoulder, two things are involved, my shoulder and the bag. And they are all in contact with each other. If I push a window open, then the force is between the hand and the window, two objects are involved. And in all of these examples, they are in contact with each other. My hand is in contact with the chair. My hand is in contact with the pen. My hand is in contact with the eraser. So I'm able to lift it. So these are all contact forces because the two objects that are involved are in contact with each other. Uh, other examples of forces are non-contact forces where an object does not come into contact with another, but a force is still exerted. For example, magnetism. When you bring a magnet near a, an iron pin and I showed it to you earlier, there is a force of attraction. How does the magnet attract a pin which is far away from the magnet? It is a non-contact force because there is no contact be, uh, between the magnet and the pin, but still there is a force of attraction. Similarly, uh, the sun attracts earth. Sun is, a, is very, very far away, 150 million kilometers, but still the sun attracts earth. How is that possible? Is that a contact force? No, because there is no contact between sun and earth. It is a non-contact force. We are talking about gravity. Right? So that was the thing we spoke about. Now we will talk about uh, a little bit more about gravity and pressure Okay, in this class. So what we have done so far is a gravitational force is a non-contact force. Basically any object which is dropped near earth will fall down to the ground. And the earth is attracting this body and it is a non-contact force. So all objects attract each other with a gravitational force. The earth stays in its orbit around the sun because of this non-contact force between the earth and the sun and it is called gravitational force. So we've spoken about contact forces and non-contact forces. So let's talk about another concept called pressure. Look at this pile of cement bags or sand bags, it doesn't matter. All of them are piled like this. So there, are, there are bags one above the other. A lot of bags are piled up. Now, you look at this bag here. Let's call it bag A. And we'll look at one bag here, let's call it bag B. And we'll look at one more bag somewhere here. It's called called bag C. So the three bags, we've just given it some names. On which of these three bags do you think there will be the maximum weight? Which bag will get compressed because of the weight of the bags above it? So if you think about that question, the bag A has all these sandbags above it. So many sandbags are there above A. If you look at B, these are the sandbags above B. And if you look at C, it doesn't look like there is any sandbag above C. So if you think about it, which of these three bags experiences the maximum weight because of the bags above it? Obviously, it is the bag A. A has the maximum weight above it. Why? Because there are so many bags above A. Which is the bag that experiences the least amount of weight above it? It is C. And somewhere in between A and C is B. Why does it happen? 
why does A experience so much more weight than B or C? That is because A has so many bags about it. If you count, there are one, two, three, four, maybe five, six, seven, so maybe seven or eight bags about it. Whereas B has only one, two, maybe three. And C doesn't have anything. So this is simply because of the weight of the bags about it, the number of bags about it. So A experiences the maximum weight because of the bags about it, and C experiences the least. So what we have found is that the weight, I'll tell you what pressure is in just a little while. The pressure, which is the amount of force acting in a given amount of area, in, in, in unit area, increases as the depth increases. So let's go back to our three bags once again. This was C, maybe this was B, and this was A, right? So the if this, this is the top of the pile. This is the top of the pile. Let us look at how deep these bags are. C is at the very top of the pile. It's at the very top. So there are no bags above it. B is at, at a depth. This is the depth. How deep is bag B? It is so deep. Depth of bag B. And what is the depth of bag A? The depth of bag A is so much. So what we can conclude is the maximum weight is on bag A. And that is because bag A is at the greatest depth. There are so many more bags above it. So since bag A is at the greatest depth, it experiences the greatest amount of weight above it. Right? Let's look at a different situation. Earlier we were talking about sandbags. Now we are talking about a boy in a swimming pool. Now this boy has the weight of all this water. So much water is above him. So he will feel the weight of all that water. And we have one more boy. This is the blue, blue guy. This is blue, blue boy. And he's the red boy. And the red boy has so much more water above him. Who is at a greater depth? The red boy is at a greater depth. Who has more water above him? Red has more water above him because he is deeper. So who experiences greater weight of the water? Again, it is red because there is more water above him. So once again, we see that the depth is responsible for the weight of the water above the boy. And if the boy goes deeper, what do you think? Does the pressure or the, or the weight of the water increase or decrease? The weight of the water increases because he has gone deeper and there is more water about the boy. So this is another example to understand how the depth determines the weight experienced by the boy in the swimming pool. Let us do one activity. So we have three boys here, A, B and C, and they are all in the swimming pool and they are at different depths. A is not very deep. And then there is a... And then there is C here. So let's remove D here. There is a C and then there is B. The boy who is deepest is B. The boy who is not deep at all is A. Now let us arrange them in the increasing order of the pressure experienced. Who experiences the greatest pressure? Who experiences the greatest weight of the water above him? The person who is deepest 
will experience the greatest pressure so b so b experiences the greatest pressure and why because b is at the greatest depth and a experiences the least pressure because the depth of a is the lowest and c is somewhere in between right and so we are talking about how the depth determines the pressure now what is true of so first we spoke about sandbags the deeper you go in the pile the greater the pressure then we spoke about swimming pool the deeper you go greater the pressure now we are talking about the atmosphere around the earth now this is the ground this is the ground this is very high in the atmosphere right very high above the ground now the same thing that you saw with sandbags and in the swimming pool will happen here the deeper you go the greater the pressure so what is depth you go here so from here if you go here you are going deeper from here you go here you are going even deeper from here you go like this you are going even deeper remember you are measuring how do you deep you go in the atmosphere of the earth and here if you go you are at the bottom most point in the atmosphere so when if you are standing here then the weight of all this air is above you so you will feel greater pressure when when you are standing on the ground compared to when you are standing up here if you are standing here what is the weight of the air above you only so much so who experiences greater pressure in these two examples is it a or is it b now b is down here and has so much air above him so b will experience greater atmospheric pressure what is atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is the pressure that the atmosphere of earth exerts on everything on earth let's answer this simple question there are two men two people standing here one is standing on top of a very high mountain and one is at the bottom so let's say this man is on mount everest you all all heard mount everest is the highest peak in the world and this man let's say is in uh, in bangalore who experiences greater pressure if you think about the explanation that i gave in the earlier picture in fact we can use the earlier picture so let me erase this so if we have mount everest here this is mount everest okay so one man is standing here at the bottom and one man is standing here who experiences greater pressure the the amount of air above him is so much the amount of air above him is so much so who experiences greater pressure it is the person who is standing on the ground who experiences greater pressure the person who is standing at the top of the of the hill or mountain experiences lower air pressure and that is the answer the person standing in bangalore in our example experiences greater atmospheric pressure than the person at the at the top of mount uh, everest another illustration of how 
pressure increases as the depth increases is <coughs> you have a bottle filled with water and there are three holes here there is hole a hole b and hole c <coughs> three tiny holes have been created in the bottle and water is leaking out of these three holes you look at the way water is leaking before that which hole is at the greatest depth a is here that is the depth of a b and c b is at a greater depth and c is at a even greater depth so c is at the greatest depth and you can see that the water here goes like that water here goes like that and the water here is stopping here it goes further you can see that the pressure at a is the lowest because the depth is the least the pressure at b is more and the pressure at c is even more that is because c is at the greatest depth so i have been using the word pressure what is pressure pressure is the force exerted over unit area unit area could be 1 cm square or 1 m square so one uh, is the unit area could be 1 m square or 1 cm square of course the si unit of area would be 1 m square because the si unit of length is 1 m so unit area could be 1 m square or 1 cm square um the pressure is equal to the force exerted we call it the normal force because it is the force perpendicular to the surface divided by the the area over which this force is acting so force divided by area gives us the pressure now let us look at the si units of of uh, of these things now force can be expressed in newtons that is the si unit of force area like i said earlier is expressed in meter square that is the si unit of area therefore pressure becomes uh, newton per meter square so the newtons is in the numerator meter square is in the denominator so the units of pressure will be newton per meter square now there are many examples to understand this better which is easier to do cutting a tomato with a sharp knife or with a blunt knife the answer is simple to cut anything to chop to chop vegetables you would prefer a sharp knife why what changes a blunt knife has a greater area and a sharp knife has a smaller area so smaller the area greater the pressure so you can exert greater pressure with a sharper knife than with a blunt knife and that is where uh, you can understand this using this equation the force is the same let us say but as the area decreases in a sharp knife the pressure is greater one more example so you look at this this animal is a 1600 kg hippopotamus is a massive animal you must have seen it in uh, Uh, in on tv or or in a zoo or in in a, in a book these are massive animals which live in water uh, they are uh, they eat plants they they are uh, they grow to be very big so let's say that this animal weighs 1600 kg there is a woman here who weighs 60 kg right now the hippopotamus hippo will step on your foot so it means the hippo's leg will 
put will be put on your foot it will hurt because this is a heavy animal next the woman who's wearing those uh, heels please observe these heels she will put her heels on your foot which one will hurt more this is 1600 kilograms this is a mere 60 kilograms look at the foot here this is the foot of the hippo that foot will come rest on your foot or this heel will come rest on your foot which will hurt more i would like to ask you to do it let's say let's say area of hippo's foot is let's say 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters is the okay area of bottom of woman's heel right what is the heel it's a this the area here right the area which is here is let's say it is 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters so 0 0.2 meters into so this is the area so in each case you know the the force being exerted in one case it is 1600 in the other case it is 60 and you know the area so calculate the pressure and see which one creates a bigger pressure on your foot which will hurt more you can answer pressure is again you've seen people do this you know this man is lying on a, a bed of nails he is not in pain he is lying there um, without too much pain how is that possible because his weight is distributed across a greater area but if you step on a nail if you're walking and you step on a nail will it hurt more and that is another thing for you to think about so what we have done so far is i've told you that first of all pressure as a concept is the force exerted over unit area so pressure is equal to force divided by area the other concept is the concept of atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is pressure because of the amount of air above us so we are all living inside the atmosphere of the earth and this atmosphere has weight so if i'm standing here on earth there is so much air above me and i can feel the weight of all this air and that is what I call atmospheric pressure. The greater the amount of air above me, the greater the atmospheric pressure. If I go to the top of Mount Everest, I will feel a lesser amount of atmospheric pressure. So this is what we have done today. We want to, uh, I will end this class with a, with a simple practice activity. <coughs> So in each of these situations, I would like you to calculate. Um, if I give you two values, there are three quantities written here. I'll give you two of them. You have to calculate the third. So let's start with the first simple one. Let's say it's 15 newtons. And uh, this thing is uh, uh, 0 0.5 meter square. So area is expressed in 
meter square. So what is the pressure? So this is F, this is A, and this is P. And remember the formula, and it can be written in different ways. F divided by A is equal to P. This is one way to write it. This is the relationship between force, the area over which the force is exerted, and the pressure P. You could also write it as F is equal to A into P, or it could be written as F divided by P is equal to A. This is the same thing written in, in different ways. So F is known, A is known, we have to calculate P. We can use this formula. So P is equal to F divided by A, 15 divided by 0 0.5, right? 15 divided by half or 0 0.5 gives us 30 Newton per meter square. Remember, this is in Newton's force. This is in meter square. So uh, this is 30 Newton per meter square. And that is the answer to the first question. Go to the next question. So a force of 60 Newtons is creating a pressure of 240 Newton per meter square. So what is the area over which that force is acting? So again, you know, of the three quantities, two are known. Force is known, pressure is known, and we have to calculate area. And we will use this form of the equation. F divided by P is equal to A. So we say Zero point two five is the answer, no doubt. But in what units? So because the pressure has been expressed in newton per meter square, the area, the answer we will get it in meter square. So this is zero point two five meter square, and so on. So these are simple illustrations of how you can use this equation, the relationship between force, area, and pressure, to uh, to find out the third quantity. If you know F and A, you can calculate P. If you know F and P, you can calculate A and so on. So with that, we come to the end of uh, this chapter on force, uh, area and uh, pressure. Um, we are starting a, a new chapter in the next class. I hope you understood everything about the effects of pressure, uh, about uh, effects of forces, uh, contact and non-contact forces and the concept of gravity and then pressure. Okay, so in the next class, we will start a new topic. See you in the next class.